All right, what's going on, guys? Your boy King Red Diamonds, and I'm back with another Neo 2 video. I'm um, going to be continuing on with my Weapon Guy series. So, today we'll be going over the Tonfa. But before we get into it, I ask you guys like, comment, subscribe. Um, I appreciate all the support, it really helps the channel. So, make sure you're getting the word out, um, you know, liking it up, commenting, suggesting it to your friends, reposting it wherever you need to do. Um, but uh, yeah, let's keep it going on the road to 1K. So, uh, thank you guys again, and we'll get right into it. So, uh, the Tonfa. The Tonfa are um, a very close quarters combat weapon. Tonfa are very powerful. They're probably one of the most devastating weapons in the game just because of the sheer amount of attacks they can put out. Like, their, their damage per second is, like, insane just because, like, they they do so many consecutive hits that you can completely overwhelm an enemy using the Tonfa if you use them correctly. The Tonfa are a blunt weapon, so they do massive, massive, massive amounts of key damage. Um, if you if, if you don't know, um, blunt weapons such as the fists, the Tonfa, and um, like the hammer, anything that's a blunt weapon on this game, they deal a massive amount of key damage. But any bladed weapon on the game does more melee damage. So, um, blunt weapons do key damage, bladed weapons do melee damage. So, for Tonfa, Tonfa is the perfect weapon to use if you're stacking key damage um, skills. So, it's key damage, key damage effects on your items and your equipment and stuff like that. So, Tonfa is very, very good. Um, they're very fast paced. They're not that hard to use, which is why I like them. Um, I'm not, it's not my favorite weapon, but Tonfa is a good weapon. I do like the Tonfa. They're very good. They're very easy to use when you get the, the moves set down and figure out how you want to play them. But uh, we're going to get into these skills. So our first uh, three skills that I'm going to talk about, because the reason I chose all three of these together is because they pretty much essentially are the same skill, <clears throat> excuse me, just in different stances. So we have the Demon Dance Heaven. Demon Dance Man and Demon Dance Earth. All three of these skills pretty much essentially are the same. During a key pulse, you'll do this little spin back right here, and that's in the low, mid, and high stance. So we can just go ahead and grab all three of those. Next, we have Wild Lions. Wild Lions is a regular active skill. Um, it's a nice active skill. With this, I usually put an Arcana on on this. Um, it depends on which Arcana I'm feeling at the time. It might be Lightning, it might be Water, or something like that. But I usually put an arcana on them because of the amount of hits you can get off with this. You do two wild lines and you can inflict any enemy with any ailment you have on your weapon. Um, especially if you have your weapon, if you use a talisman. Say you use like a purification talisman on your weapon. You use this technique maybe once or twice. They're automatically infli inflicted with the purification um, effect. So wild lines is actually a very good technique. So we'll grab that. All right, so um, next, uh, we're gonna go up here to shove. Shove is definitely one of my favorite combo enders just because it does a good amount of key damage. Um, the shift right here is pretty much like a push and um, you can break your enemy's guard, drain their key, finish them off, knock them off balance, stagger them with this technique. So we're gonna grab shove for sure. Next we have Pulverize Heaven. Pulverize Heaven, as you can see, is a continuation to Demon Dance. When you do Demon Dance, you just press R1 and you do the spin back. If you press square after doing your Demon Dance in high stance, you'll pull off this, this technique where you just pretty much obliterate your enemy. And when I tell you that the Tonfa can get status buffs and statics, uh, status debuffs up on enemies in no time, the Tonfa might be outside of uh maybe the split staff the tonfa outside of the split staff is probably one of the best weapons to use if you're using an element because they're going to get that that element debuff up on the enemy and after that it's gg like it's, it's good it, we're, we're done so pulverized heaven is definitely a must grab definitely a must grab uh, Mountain Breaker, it's not that necessary. It's just like, it, as you can see, he just jumps forward and slams one of the Tonfa into the ground. Not something I would say like is an absolutely necessary skill. You don't need to have this, 
but what you do want to get a hold of is urgency the reason why is because urgency can be used to drain key if you put masterful slice on urgency you can probably knock someone down to either half or take away all of their key just because of how it is it's, it's a it's a char it's like a, a it's a charge attack as you can see in the right corner next to active it's a charge attack so you're going to do a good amount of key damage if you use this with masterful slice so definitely grab urgency all right we're working our way over to here we got focus strike focus strike is another good technique just like um Ur it's literally just like urgency it's just that the style is different um with this one you can use this as a finisher if someone's on if someone's low on health and you want to get them out of the way quickly focus strike will help you hold triangle and you'll charge at them with this super fast technique so we're going to grab that for sure next we have uh demon dash now demon dash is not a bad technique at all the reason why is because it comes with demon fang and more than likely when you're fighting an enemy you're going to press triangle after the after you're fighting them because of just because that's naturally a, a instinct when playing a fighting game you're naturally going to press triangle even if say you don't even have an active skill set as your triangle naturally you would want to go square your natural reaction when fighting is square 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 triangle that's everyone's natural reaction when they play a fighting game just because that's how they grew up playing the game or at least that's how i do it so when you press triangle after um if after doing a demon dash which will pretty much activate almost all the time because you'll be pressing up on the left stick pretty much the entire time you're fighting you'll automatically activate demon dash and then if you press triangle and they have no key you'll do that so definitely grab that now be weary sometimes this does get in the way if you're in the middle of combat so in order to not have to deal with this just completely stop moving and then press triangle if you want to do a grapple but if you want to do the demon fang grapple by all means you know do that but if you want to do a regular grapple, make sure you're not moving and then you press triangle because you will pull off one of the, a demon dash into the demon fang. Uh, Fleet foot is not bad at all either. It's a good distance closer. Like it allows you, it allows you to get gain distance like very quickly. It activates on a dodge. So as you can see in the beginning, he steps backwards and then presses triangle to do dash forward. Um, it's good utility. I'm not saying it's necessary. If you would like to use it, you by all means can. Um, I didn't use it as much because it's like more than likely I'm gonna just run towards the enemy instead of having to try to dodge like dash towards them but um not only that but because I dash towards them instead of uh, doing this I control whether I stop or not with this I'm pretty sure it's gonna bring you forward that far um, and sometimes you might not want to get in close at the moment so that's why I just usually run towards the enemy instead of using fleet foot um, here we have Crimson Lotus. Crimson Lotus is not bad at all. It's a, it's a um, combo ender off of a strong attack. So instead of pressing, instead of doing your square, 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 triangle, it's more, it's triangle and then square. Um, as you, if you read it, if the Tonfa had the Tonfa gun, special effect, press square will perform an additional attack that fires an explosive charge at the enemy. So with Crimson Lotus, if you have the Tonfa that has the Tonfa gun uh, special effect on there, it'll fire off a blast. At the end of your um, at the end of your punch at the end of the combo, so right here it'll fire off a, like a explosive blast, and it'll deal increased damage to the enemy, and I think it even might inflict them with the scorched effect. So Crimson Lotus actually has a double effect, but it all depends on whether you have the Tonfa gun effect on your Tonfa or not. And then we have Devastation. Devastation is also another one that works with the Tonfa gun. So both of these work well with the Tonfa gun um, if you have it on your weapon. I don't have them on my weapon, so I don't need to equip them at the moment. Um, but if you do if you do like to run the Tonfa gun effect on your Tonfas, by all means, please grab these. They're very good. Um, over here is a special skill that you get from fighting um, Hanzo. Uh, if you fight Hanzo, he'll drop this uh, technique right here, and it's very good. I use it. Um, it does a lot of damage and it also circles around your enemy to get them out of position so um, definitely if you can if you want to farm him up and grab this by all means do so um, now we're going down to pulverize earth that's the easy grab no questions asked uh, double kick double kick is like um 
I guess it's just like an extra technique, really. It's not something that I would say is like, you got to have this. This is something you need. It's not, it's not really. Um, it has utility. It can, you can use it in place of uh, urgency or um, focus strike pretty much to do to do key damage and stuff like that. Other than that, this is not something I would say that is absolutely necessary for you to have. And then we have uh, pre-science. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, basically it evades all the attacks so if you if you um if you dodge backwards but you didn't get away fa like fast enough and you're in the way like you're in danger of getting attacked it'll do an extra dodge backwards to keep you safe so we're definitely going to grab that any dodging active skills to me perfectly fine uh we're gonna come up here to sweep and kick sweep and kick again it's just a combo ender not something that's you know like absolutely necessary um, of course, it'd be, you know, useful in combos and stuff, but it's not something I would say, like, oh, you have to have. Pulverize, man, you have to have this. You need this, no question. Tiger Bite is more of a counter. Um, well, it's not a counter, really. It's, more, it's like you block first and then, you know, do that, like a little uppercut. Not something I would say, like, it's absolutely necessary. Thousand Tons, this is a counter or a parry, if you want to call it. Um, basically... You know, press the buttons at the right time and do a counter strike. Again, you know me, I'm not a parry guy. I don't really use parries. Um, more than likely, I'll just block or evade. Parries um, deal with good timing. If you don't have good timing and you're trying to do a parry, you could end up taking a lot of damage. So I usually tend to stay away from them because to me, it's the safer route to stay away from parries unless you're absolutely good or godlike with your timing. If you're not good with your timing, I do not recommend using parries because if you mistime them, you can take a lot of damage, especially in late game. So um, if you like your parries or your counters, by all means, grab these. They're all very useful. But um, me personally, I do not use parries. Uh, but we have um, Impenetrable. You just press L1 right before an attack. You deflect it. Um, we have Dragon Slayer, which is a follow-up to Impenetrable. So if you press L1 to deflect and then press L1 again, um, you'll do this nice little uppercut right here. And then if you press L1 twice after doing an impenetrable, you get a nice little Shryuken. So, um, yeah, if you want to grab these, by all means, grab them. Me personally, I do not use parry, so I'm going to leave these alone. And then uh, I forgot about Heavenly Chain. Heavenly Chain is definitely something I'm going to grab. Heavenly Chain is a very good combo ender. Um, you can also use this to inflict damage. You can inflict um, a status ailment on your enemy. Very good for that. Um, a lot of the Tonfa techniques are very good for, you know, dealing elemental damage and stuff like that. But um, that's all the techniques that I would grab. Again, um, every technique that I, the techniques that I did not grab, that doesn't mean they're not good. It does not mean that they are not good. It just means that me personally, for my personal experience and my personal fighting style, I'm not running them just because it doesn't fit into the way I play. Um, these two, I would grab just the reason I didn't grab them is because I not, I'm not running the Tonfa gun. So honestly, they're just combo enders that don't really serve much of a purpose outside of being a combo ender. If I had a Tonfa gun, they would be a lot more viable. So um, I'm not grabbing these just only because I don't have a Tonfa gun. If I had a Tonfa gun, I would definitely grab these. Um, Fleet Foot again. Fleet Foot is not bad at all. It's just that I personally want to control the distance in which I'm closing it on the enemy rather than it giving me a predetermined distance. And then uh, sweep kick again. This is not saying it's bad at all. It's not a bad technique. It's just that it's not really necessary in terms of um, it's not really necessary in terms of me using it as a combo ender. So um, I can stay away from sweep and kick. And then these are parries. Again, I don't use parries because I don't want to bank on my timing. I don't want to bank on me being on time with my parries. So I leave these alone just to be safe. Um, now we have our um, now we have our mystic arts. So we have apocalypse and we have um, Kanagi. Kanagi is not a bad active skill at all. It just allows you to cancel out Tonfa techniques using the demon dance. So if you're in the middle of a technique and say that an enemy is about to attack you, you can cancel it out by using demon dance and reset. Um, it's not bad at all. It's actually very good. It comes in handy at certain points. But one you want to go with is Apocalypse. It increases the damage from Tonfa when you perform a series of consecutive attacks. 
The Tonfas literally feed off of consecutive attacks. This right here is considered consecutive attacks. That's one. This is one active skill, and it is considered consecutive attacks because he does so many um, hits in one attack. So this will activate Apocalypse. You get a damage boost on consecutive attacks. So as long as this is considered a consecutive attack, as long as you're attacking with the Tonfa, you will be getting this damage boost. So Apocalypse is a must run. You must run Apocalypse. It's not even up for debate. You have to run this. You do not have to run this. You can run this, but it is not necessary. So a lot of weapons in the game, it does it, you it, you would like to get um, Mystic Dyad for them to be able to run both of their Mystic Arts, but there are also weapons that you do not need Mystic Dyad for, and it frees up space on your weapon to put another special special effect in that slot. So this is one of the weapons that you do not need to have Mystic Dyad for, but it is okay to have it. Um, if you hear my heater in the background, I apologize for that. But um, yeah, that's pretty much all the skills that I would use. I'm just gonna grab the the normal, you know, passives that we usually grab. Uh, Shadow Strike, Course. I'll come back to that. Uh, where is the other one? It's not. It's kind of Shadow Strike and passes. Okay, cool. All right, so. Um, from here we can come down. We got buoyancy. Uh, buoyancy pretty much increases the damage of my Tonfa depending on how light my equipment is. And since I'm in all light gear, I can grab this now. Um, usually I probably wouldn't use this because I don't run light gear when I'm playing the ga actual game. Like I do not run light gear. Um, light gear is too dangerous to run. Um, especially in depths of the underworld, you get hit, you're getting killed in one to two hits. It's not fun. Um, but for t for t for now's video, just because I am running light gear. I will run it. Um, this damage scaling is not massive. It goes from a D minus to a D plus. That is absolutely nothing. That's probably about 5% if that. Like 5% damage increase. That's not bad. It's not something I would say is it game changing. It's not even close. But extra 5% damage can't really hurt. And then we come over here to uh, 3 Wars Kata. This increases the, this reduces the key damage we take basically. So if we if we get hit, we take less key damage. So we're definitely gonna grab that. Uh, this is just to add more key to us, so we can, you know, why not have more key? And then we have melee mastery. But every other skill you do not need because these are for builds that either have to have very high health or very low health, and we do not need them. Uh, yep. So that is all of the skills. Um, you guys can take a picture, screenshot it. Do what you need to do copy it down if this is what you want to use but these are the skills that i would use but um we're going to hop into the second half of the video where i break down like what slots i put them in and then show you a little bit of gameplay and then we'll get out of there but i'll see you in the second half all right guys welcome back to the second half of the video um, now i'm going to show you guys what slots i will put most of these techniques in and how i would use them and all that other good stuff so this doesn't have anything extra, it's just a regular grapple. Apocalypse, self explanatory, get damage boost just for attacking. Use Apocalypse, use it, use it, use it. Um, next, we have Shove. Shove is definitely going to go there. It's the only one I have right there, so it's going to go there. Shove is definitely a go to technique. Heavenly Chain, got to go with this. Uh, we're going to go with Urgency. Urgency, definitely because we close in really fast and we can knock the enemy back. Wild Lions, got to go with. that Demon Dance, the only one that goes there. Keep it. Storm of Strike, keep it. Um, you can. I'll put Storm of Strikes here. Focus Strike, you can probably put here. Um, either one, you can switch it up. Doesn't matter which one you use, honestly. Um, actually, I'll probably just go with Focus Strike up top. But um, it doesn't matter which one you use. Either one works. Um, you can put them in different slots. So that's why I'll put Focus Strike here. And I'll just keep Storm of Strikes uh, down here. Uh, shove only one that goes right here because I'm not using sweeping kick sweeping kick is okay, but I'm, it's not something that you need 
Um, I don't need nothing right there, really. Heavenly Chain. Only one that goes there. Wild Lions. Uh, Demon Dad's Man. Only one that goes there. Getting Storm of Strikes. Um, for Shove, Wild Lions. And uh, Heavenly Chain. Like, you can use one of these, the Arcanus. And then for, like, uh, again, Shove, I would go with um, Massive Slice. As you can see, it gives you 20% extra key damage on that active skill. So it's very good. But uh, Heavenly Chain, you can go with Arcana Dead, Fire, Water, Lightning, Power, Serpent, Vermin. doesn't matter. You can go with any of these. But I definitely would recommend putting the Arcana on them. And Wild Lions as well. Uh, we go down. I just put Sweeping Kick there just because... Um, but everything else pretty much stays the same. Double kick is there. Wild lines. Give them dance hurts. All that stuff. But yeah, everything's pretty much the same. It, it just stays that way because I don't use. I use the tech. I usually try to buy the techniques that I absolutely necessarily need. Um, if I don't buy it, then I don't need it. But uh, this is how it looks. If you want to, you know, slow the video down, pause it, go through it as slow as you want. This is what I use. But yeah let's hop right into it now the Tonfa Tonfa's obliterate enemies just because of the sheer amount of attacks they do like look at that See how I knocked him off his feet? I didn't mean to do that technique. Now he's probably gonna die. Yeah. But yeah, Tonfas go crazy. Like, you're going to overwhelm your enemy. And you saw how I knocked him out of it. Like, I pretty much staggered him and gave him zero, put a game to zero key effect. Like, the Tonfa are a devastating weapon in the right hands. If you use the Tonfa correctly, you will obliterate enemies. You see those little time for pop up in the left hand corner? That's your apocalypse activating. So, say I'm gonna activate apocalypse. Apocalypse activates no matter how many times you hit the enemy. You can hit the enemy one time and apocalypse will activate. As you can see, it's always active. I mean, I'm constant shit. I'm constantly getting that damage boost. Oh well, I killed him before. But as you can see, when I was attacking, that the um, apocalypse buff is always active because you're always going to be attacking. So as long as you're attacking, you're getting that damage increase. So that's how that's how good apocalypse is as an, um, a mystic art. Now what I didn't tell you is that is that um Demon Dance does not activate when you do a flux key pulse. So if you're fluxing or doing a flux two, Demon Dance will not activate. So for example, if I do a regular attack like this, Demon Dance. But if I flux you cancel it out. You see how I cancel that out? If you flux during a demon dance, you'll cancel it out. But if you just do a regular key pulse, you'll do a demon dance every time.
as you can see if I had if I had like status debuffs on this weapon already I would have obliterated him by now <laughs> but that's the time for right there like if I was to put say an arcana my fact I would actually do that how about that I can put an arcana on uh, weapon just to show you guys what I mean how about I put water here mm, I'll put lightning here and why not just about fire Try power. Yeah, that, that should be enough. That's one. That's two. I did that twice, and he's inflicted with the sloth effect, with the uh, the lightning effect, basically. Like he slowed. That's that's what I'm saying. That's how powerful that is. Like that's how how easy it is when you use the time for to get an effect to get a, a status debuff on an enemy. And he's almost inflicted with scorch. And now he is. Now he's inflicted with Scorch. That's what I mean, like, with the Tonfa. You can inflict them with, like, two techniques. Let's see if I can get Confusion up on the enemy. Let's see if I can get confusion up on the enemy. That'll prove even more so that the Tonfa is ridiculous. Yep, there it is. <laughs> confusion in two t different combos. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, Tonfa are possibly one of the most devastating weapons in the game. It's easy to get status debuffs on enemies, they're ridiculous to use. And they don't even have that many techniques that you have to learn, so they're easy to use. You can keep your enemy on edge. You can keep the, your enemy controlled down to the entire fight if you have the key to work with. Luckily, the Tonfa actually worked with uh, Courage. 
which is the stat that determines uh, how quickly you use key and how quickly you recover it. But yeah, uh, that is the Tonfa. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Uh, remember, you know, like, comment, subscribe. Leave me your feedback. Let me know anything else you want to see. Uh, let me know if you're enjoying the content. Let me know if you like the new series. Um, but I appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you so much. It's King Red Diamonds, and I'm out.